Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to cover in the show and a lot coming up later today as well. We'll discuss it all, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were somewhat quiet. We'll see a filament rip away in a moment, but pops continue top right behind the limb, with the coronal hole turning through on the south for the earthquake watch. Perhaps you saw the dark circle at the bottom. This often happens at the new moon period, which is indeed today. It's a moon eclipse. Next, watch top center and then to the left. Darker colored filament lifts and tries to erupt, but cannot pull it off, falling back down to the sun. No major CME. We do have some sunspots on the disk, tiny on the south and needing to develop, and just at the limb now on the north here this morning, a big one. Eyes on those tomorrow. The solar wind is variable, but only within moderate range and with favorable interplanetary magnetic field angle. Earth's magnetic field is handling it well. So we come to quakes where yesterday's six-pointer in California was followed up by one in Indonesia and one above average in Tajikistan. The quake watch does continue until that coronal hole on the south departs. Folks, it has been a while since we looked at the Earth's rotation speed. Yesterday, it appears to be their best guess at the fastest day of the year, July 9th, spinning in under 24 hours. But it is also noteworthy that the annual average per day and the total, those guesses were over 0.2 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds just a few months ago. It is still set to be Earth's fastest year on record, but we'll have to wait and see how they adjust this day to day in the coming months. Up next is a double about X-rays. First, they discover many X-ray sources in the cosmos simply aren't being seen because of our angle of observation. This is the exact same thing that is true with the distinction between radio loud quasars and gamma ray bursts. It apparently works with X-rays as well. JPL link is below. The second X-ray story today is from the ESA and they're finding many more toroidal fields on Jupiter than poloidal ones. The toroidal fields are the ones that indeed wrap back all the way around to the other pole. Jupiter was thought to have more of the open, poloidal fields shooting north and south at the region in higher latitude than its auroral arcs, but it's simply not the case. Its magnetic torus is quite complete. Lastly on the article front, bit of a letdown in my head. I was hoping that story from a few days ago about the excess methane on Enceladus was indeed being produced by biological life. But the excess ice quakes near the same plume region would open up greater chemical transport from below the ice. It could still be from biological processes, but the idea that there is an unexplainable amount of methane in the plumes should die here. This is an excellent explanation. Folks, come back later tonight for a special video on the icy realms of the planet in the Earth tilt. Probably going to answer a lot of your questions. Website members, our Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in a few hours as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.